Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making fried taters. Okay, what you need to make fried taters is taters, salt, pepper, and something to go in your pan to sizzle. Now, you can fry these in any kind of fat whatsoever. Um, you can make a healthier oil choice, or you can go with baking grease or lard or butter, just whatever you want. And you can add a whole bunch of stuff to taters too. But we're going to kind of do a basic recipe. I do have some onions I'm putting in mine. And I've got a little bit of bacon grease that I'm going to show you a trick with. A way you can eat healthier and still have that flavor that you love. You want to start by preheating your pan. You don't want to ever fry anything in a cold pan. So go ahead and turn your pan on about medium and get your fat in it so it can start heating up. Now I'm using some grapeseed oil. And grapeseed oil or olive oil are much healthier fats than some of the traditional stuff like bacon grease and lard and even vegetable shortening. They have no cholesterol, no trans fats, none of that kind of stuff. And they're loaded with omega-3s and 6s and stuff that are really good for your brain and your nervous system. Uh, from all the research I've done, you do want to make sure you get cold pressed because some of the other stuff maybe is not as good for you as you might think. But, you know, there are much healthier fat choices and you can still enjoy fried foods without sacrificing your health if you want to. Now, what I have here is just about a tablespoon of leftover bacon grease that I've saved. And this will season the potatoes and give them that flavor of being cooked in bacon grease, but it doesn't have that much of the bad fat in it. And you just need a little bit. I, you probably don't even need all that, but just a little bit. And you can also use a little bit of butter and butter gives a wonderful flavor to taters. So I'm just gonna add that in my pan with my oil for some extra flavor. Now, how you cut up your potatoes or whether or not you peel them is kind of a matter of personal preference and what kind of tater you've got. Now this time of year, this is how my taters look. They've got some little eyes on them, they're a little shriveled up, the skin is really thick, and you can wash and scrub all you want to and it's not gonna get these to the point where this skin is gonna taste good. Now, if you've got some new potatoes with a nice thin skin or something like a Yukon Gold or a red skin potato that's nice and fresh, you, can, you don't have to peel those. You can just leave the skin on them. And also, if your potatoes are a little bit sunburned, now when they're sunburned, they turn green and that green flavor is bitter. You want to make sure you peel all that off. And this one here was a little bit sunburned and I missed a little bit of green on it. So make sure you get all that off. Now I said how you cut them kind of affects the texture and the flavor a little bit because each piece is going to brown. Now I like mine cut about this size. Um, my mama, she used to slice hers kind of thin like this. And my aunt Dot, she would cut hers in itty bitty cubes. Um, I never took time to cut mine in itty bitty cubes, but you can do it just by putting a few slices in your tater, both directions. And then you cut it in itty bitty cubes. Um, the itty bitty cubes are gonna cook faster and you're gonna get more area on the outside of your tater to brown. But you know, that kind of, just depends on personal preference. You know, hers were about that size where I usually do mine about that size. <laughs> and it does take a little bit longer, but my Aunt Dot was one of them women that she just spent all day standing in front of the stove and that's what she enjoyed doing. If you don't have all day, you can cut them a little bit bigger. 
the size though like I said it does affect the texture a little bit it certainly affects the cooking time um, and I just cut mine like that much faster than the itty bitty cubes but I do like chunks over slices you want to make sure you wash your taters really good whether you peel them or not and you can take just one piece of tater and drop it in your pan and check to see if it's hot and you can see that my tater is sizzling around it there pretty good which means my oil is hot and I, I can move it all the way around the pan and it sizzles all the way well not quite over there it's getting there though it should sizzle no matter where you put it in the pan um, this stove doesn't heat real even there it goes now it's getting hot on that side if you put your taters in a cold pan they're gonna stick and you're gonna spend the whole time that you're cooking them scraping them off the bottom of the pan now whether you use an iron skillet or a teflon pan you want a spatula that has a nice straight sharp edge on it now if you're using a non-stick pan of course you don't want to use a metal spatula you want to use something a nylon one for a non-stick pan but let's go ahead and put our taters in here be careful you don't want that grease popping on you now what i do is i do two to three taters this size for every person that i'm cooking and of course if you've got bigger taters you won't need quite so many and if you're cooking them with the skins on them they'll go a little bit farther because you're not losing any tater peeling them but i would make four to six potatoes this size just for me and brett and I've got kind of a medium onion that I've chopped up here nice and fine. And I'm going to add that into my taters while they're frying too. You want to stir your taters after you put them in the oil. And what this does is it coats them all with the hot oil. And it'll keep them from sticking later. Because as they cook the oil is going to be kind of soaked into the taters and then your pan's going to get dry but if you get them all coated before they start to cook and the oil soaks in them you will there will be far less of a chance that you're going to have to add more oil to them as they fry and once you get your taters stirred up good there you can go ahead and add your onions in on top of the taters and how much onion you add in is up to you or whether or not you even put it in we just like onions in our fried taters um, you the onions will tend to brown quicker and they will stick to the bottom of your pan if you're not real careful so kind of keep an eye on them it does make it hard a little harder to cook them and keep them from sticking now I like to cover mine with a lid because I like my fried taters cooked done. I like the taters on the inside to be soft, but on the outside, I like it brown and crisp. A lot of people don't like the center cooked soft. If you like your center a little bit crisp, don't put the lid on it. Leave the lid off and just fry it with the lid off. But if you like the centers of your fried taters to be really soft, put the lid on. That way the center will get done before the outside gets burned. Now I said you can put a lot of stuff in your fried taters. You can add bacon in them. You can add cheese in them. You can add all kinds of stuff in them. You could fry a little bacon in the pan and then take the bacon out and fry your taters just in bacon grease. If you have if you want to add bacon to it that's the way you want to do it you want to mostly cook the taters and then sprinkle the bacon in after the taters are cooked the same way with cheese if you wanted to add cheese in them you want to wait till the taters are pretty much cooked and then just sprinkle the cheese in them if you leave the bacon in there or you put the cheese in there when you start cooking you're going to end up with a burn stuck mess so save that stuff until the end or like I said cook the bacon in the pan and then take the bacon out and just fry your taters in the bacon grease the salt and the pepper is just to taste like the onion is to taste you know whether or not you use it or how much you use it's up to you or anything else you add to them when we have fried taters we usually have some cornbread and a bowl of beans uh, maybe some corn or when they're in season definitely tomatoes and cucumbers 
And in the cornbread video I just did, I said I always use my medium pan to make my cornbread. That's because I use my big pan to make my taters. <laughs> and we pretty much always have that together. One of the biggest questions that I get asked about cast iron pans is, do you use metal in your cast iron? Well, heaven's sakes, this cast iron pan gets so hot, it would melt them nylon spatulas that you use in non-stick pans. And it would also kind of chew them up. I mean, the cast iron is some tough stuff. I could take this spatula and scrape it on the bottom of that pan until the spatula wore down to the plastic and it wouldn't hurt the pan. Um, so metal is not gonna hurt your cast iron. I don't know who in the world got that started. But every old cook that I know has a good, sharp, stiff metal spatula that they use in their cast iron. And every old cook that I know uses a fork, a metal fork, in their cast iron. I said that's one of those things people get stuff started with the internet especially, and it just spreads like wildfire. Yes, I use metal in my cast iron. I've had this cast iron skillet since I've been married, and I've been married almost as long as I've been alive, and it ain't never hurt it. <laughs> so just keep an eye on your taters, and you're not going to leave this lid on them the whole time. Um, they cook pretty quick. You want to stir them as they get brown and, you know, let them continue to brown on the outside until they get to the point where you want them. And how brown you cook them, you know, that's just another thing that's a matter of personal preference. You just got to get them the way you want them. When you stir them, you want to press that spatula against the bottom and kind of go back and forth like this. And that way, anything that is stuck on the bottom will be lifted off and it won't burn. And they're barely starting to brown now. So I really could let them go a little bit longer before I stirred them. Make sure you get all the way around the edges when you're stirring them because you don't want them sticking around the edges of your pan. Using one of them little nylon spatulas in a cast iron pan is a good way to eat some nylon because it really will melt those things. And not only will it melt them, but it's going to grind them off in the bottom of your pan. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat nylon. Okay, my taters have been cooking maybe five minutes and that's enough time for them to start to get soft with the lid on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off and set it aside because I don't need it anymore. At this point, you're just gonna keep an eye on them, cook them over about medium heat and cook them until they get as brown as you want them. And some of y'all that have seen all of our videos, you might say, hey, wait a minute, you've already done fried taters with onions. Well, I have, and I'm going to be redoing some of the older videos because I've been uploading them all on Facebook. Um, we have been sharing videos on Facebook, and we've had a Facebook page since we started, but we didn't upload them on Facebook. And now Facebook videos are bigger than YouTube videos, or at least as big. So I started putting these old videos up on Facebook, and I was watching them again because I was putting them up. And the sound is horrible horrible and the color in a lot of them is really bad and I was back in the corner you know we didn't have the bar when we started and stuff and they just weren't very good and we get a lot of comments about the background music in them and we've had that fixed for quite a while but when we first started the sound was awful there was like a lot of white noise in it it the whole video would sound like it would sound if I stuck my microphone down in this skillet here it, there was just frying in the background. So we thought, and a lot of other people thought too, that you cover up bad sound with bad music. <laughs> so we're redoing some of those. Um, and also that they have been up so long, YouTube has really kind of pushed them down and they don't get views anymore. I mean, they're not even searchable really. And the older videos were a lot of the basic foods, the really essential recipes that you need to know how to cook to feed a family. So that's another reason why we want to redo them so that they're watchable. You don't have that annoying music in the background and so that you can find them and use them. If y'all haven't 
uh, been to our Facebook page and you're on Facebook, if you go like our Facebook page and follow us and maybe watch a video or two on Facebook, I'd really appreciate it because it would help us um, get the videos out on Facebook more. And Facebook is requiring that we have like 600,000 viewed minutes or something crazy like that. So if y'all have got a minute in your own Facebook, I would really appreciate it if you drop by our Facebook page. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And on Facebook, um, there is private messenger, which there's not on YouTube. And a lot of the stuff we do, people um, want to send private messages. And you can't on YouTube. You used to be able to. They took it off. I don't know why they did away with private messages, but they did. So if you ever want to send a private message, you can do that on Facebook, which is better. And on Facebook, a lot of times we'll just post scriptures every day, which folks seem to really enjoy that. Um, we usually get more views on the scriptures that we post every day on Facebook than we do on our videos. So if you'd like to see stuff like that pop up on your feed, you can follow us on Facebook too. Here's another thing about stuff like grapeseed oil. Um, all fat pretty much has the same calories per tablespoon. And as you get older, of course, you have to start cutting calories here and there because gaining weight seems to become much easier um, your metabolism just slows down and controlling your weight is kind of a problem as you get older for everybody. Um, so if you can cut a few calories and still get that fried food taste and still get the fried food texture, that's really a good thing. And I probably had maybe a quarter of a cup of grapeseed oil in this pan. I mean, this bottle was full when I started these fried taters and it's all tapered off. So I probably didn't put more than a quarter of a cup in the pan. Now, if I had used some other kind of fat, like I had used all butter or bacon grease or um, vegetable shortening, even vegetable shortening, lard, whatever, all of that fat would have soaked into the potatoes and I probably would have had to add more fat. But you can see here, it's all still in my pan and my potatoes are almost done. So when they get done cooking, I'll be able to drain that extra fat off of there instead of eating it because it didn't soak into the potatoes, but the, they will still be crisp on the outside. They will still be moist on the inside and they will still be just like fried potatoes cooked all in bacon grease or whatever, or butter, but with much less fat. Even good fat still has calories. And if I tip the pan up here, you can see just how much is still left in the pan. And that, like I said, anything else, it would have soaked into the potatoes. There would have been no draining it off and you would have been eating it with the meal. But if you choose something like the grapeseed oil, you can drain almost all of it back off and you don't have those calories added to your food. Uh, you can also see that my potatoes are pretty well brown and they're not stuck to my pan. I mean, when I scoop them out, the pan is slick as glass underneath it. And that's what you want. Now, you don't have to cook them in an iron skillet. You can cook fried potatoes in anything. But fried potatoes in an iron skillet is just kind of one of those things that goes, it's just one of those things that's good. Um, and iron skillet cooking is healthier than any nonstick cooking, even the tef or even the porcelain coated pans. The Teflon coated pans definitely are not healthy. There's all kinds of um, health hazards associated with them, and most people have stopped even manufacturing Teflon coating. So uh, if you have those, you might want to consider replacing them. Stainless steel is another really safe option but cooking in the cast iron actually puts iron in your food and iron is one of the things that we need to stay healthy especially as we start to get older or in young women who are having children you need extra iron and you can actually get that from cooking in a cast iron skillet 
So if you've been told by a doctor that you're anemic, an iron skillet is one way to boost the iron level in your uh, blood and in your body. So it's, there are a lot of health benefits to cooking in it, not just the fact that it doesn't have loads of chemicals in it. So if you don't have iron skillets, you've never used them, you might want to try them. They're really not as hard to take care of as a lot of people think. Okay, at this point is where you want to add everything else to them. Um, go ahead and put your salt and your pepper in there, however much you want. And if you wanted to put some crumbled bacon in it or some cheese, um, anything like that, you can put it in at this point. And the salt and the pepper is literally to taste. Um, it's just however much you like. And, you know, you can add just about anything in them. If you do bacon in them, though, you're probably going to cut a lot of the salt out, maybe even all of it. If you hold the salt to the end like this, you won't need as much salt. If you hold the pepper till the end, keep in mind you don't need as much pepper either because as you cook spices, it kind of mutes the flavor. And when you add the pepper right at the end, it has a much stronger taste and so does the salt. And that literally is all it is to making perfect fried taters. And like I said, if you like the actual potato to be a little bit crisp in the middle, and not be super done don't use the lid you cook it the same way just without the lid and i like mine about this brown i mean i like plenty of nice little brown bits mixed in them you cook it as brown as you want it or you stop it before it even gets brown if you don't like it brown but those little brown crispy pieces in there they're what give it uh, all the flavor i mean i uh, i've had fried potatoes made other made in restaurants and stuff and they just don't taste like homemade fried taters so if you've never made fried taters before you definitely want to learn how um if you've had trouble making them before i hope i answered all your questions cleared up any problems you had if i didn't feel free to ask a question in the comments and don't worry about scratching your iron skillets goodness gracious you're not going to hurt an iron skillet like I said, I could grind that spatula all the way down to the handle and it wouldn't hurt it. Before I go, I want to leave y'all with Nahum 1.7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Make sure the Lord knows you trust him today. I want to thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you have not already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.